So let's talk about uh, inequalities. We've talked about solving equations in one step, with two steps, with some fractions and decimals. But let's talk about what this means when we have inequalities. And so what we're going to do is instead of getting sort of one solution here, you're going to get a set of solutions that's going to work for something. Um, and I know it sounds confusing right now, and I'm hoping that at the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of what that means, OK? Because um, sometimes what happens is you'll get um, you'll get a situation where there isn't necessarily one right answer, but there's going to be a whole lot of things that could work in, in a situation. So let's first go ahead and let's define what an inequality is, okay? So it's a mathematical sentence formed by placing an inequality symbol between two expressions, okay? So an inequality symbol is going to be something that is not equal, okay? So let's look at something that is equal. So if we have something like 4 plus 1, that's equal to 5, okay? Those are two equivalent expressions, okay? We have 4 and 1, and we have 5, and they say the same thing. If I go up 4 and up 1, it's the same as going up 5. So those would be equal, okay? And so an inequality, Inequality is when they're not equal. And so let's go ahead and let's look at some of these symbols, okay? This first one is, it's the less than symbol, and then we have the greater than symbol. And then you'll notice that as we put a line underneath here, you'll see that it becomes um, less than or equal to. And then we have greater than or equal to. And then we have an equal sign with a line through it, which means not equal to, okay? Um, and the way we always read these is, as you look at them, you look from left to right. So you'll look at something on the left side will be less than whatever's on the right side. So for instance, we could say, we know that, for instance, 4 is less than 5, okay? We know that's true. 4 is lower than 5, okay? If I have 4, it's less than 5. And that's what that means. And then conversely, right, on the, on the opposite way, if we use the greater than, I could say, well, 5 is greater than 4, okay? And we could say 5 is greater than 3, 5 is greater than 2, 5 is greater than 1. There's a whole lot of numbers that 5 is bigger than, okay? So there are some of those, uh, <clears throat> there we have the symbols, and I would hope that you write this down, write the definition down, and then also write down each of these symbols. So you might want to pause it before I move on to the next one. Okay, so let's move on here. And what we're going to talk about here is when we when we have solutions to these, okay? Like I said before, there's going to be a set of numbers that you can substitute in for a variable to make an inequality true. And this is going to make a little more sense as we move on here, okay? Remember, a variable is a number. It's either unknown or a changeable thing um, that represents an idea or a situation. All right, well, then we also have this thing called the graph of an inequality. And what we're going to do is we're going to show our answers on a number line because sometimes it's going to be easier easier to explain what we're talking about using a number line than using, you know, um, any other way because, well, you'll see later. Okay, so the graph of an inequality with one, we only talk about one variable, is a set of points on a number line that represents the solution to the inequality. So it's just basically a, a picture that's showing our answer. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at some of these. Let's see what this is, okay? Well, here we go. I have an inequality here. I have x is greater than 0, all right? But x is really a number. We don't know what that number is, but it's a number, and it's greater than 0. So well, how we read this is we look at this and we say, okay, all numbers greater than 0, okay? And what I might be doing here is maybe I'm describing positive numbers, right? If I was describing what are positive numbers, well, positive numbers are any numbers above zero. They're greater than zero, okay? And the, what I would do to show this is <clears throat> I would go ahead and I would um, I would circle this zero, okay? And then I'm going to say any number greater than that, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in any number greater than that, okay? And then I'm going to fill in this arrow at the end to indicate that it means it's going on and on and on and on, right? Every number above this, right? So like, let's take a look. All numbers that are greater than zero, well, we're saying which of those numbers are greater than zero, okay? Which numbers are greater than zero? And this is how we show it. We know that one is bigger than zero. We know that two is bigger than zero, three, four, five, right? Any positive number is going to be greater than zero because that's the definition. Now, you're looking at this, and I'm hoping you're looking to see, well, why did he write an open circle here, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because if I'm looking for numbers greater than zero, zero 
doesn't work here. Zero is not greater than zero. In fact, zero is not a positive number. So I'm not including it. And so what I'm doing is I'm talking about it's getting really, really close to this, but it's not including it, okay? So you can think of zero is the beginning of it not being true, okay? This is not part of the answer, but anything bigger than that. And the reason why I fill in every number in between here is because any positive number could also be a decimal, right? We could have all kinds of decimals in here. I could say 1.8, right? Well, 1.8 goes in here about, and 1.8, is that greater than zero? Yes, it is greater than zero. I could say 1.1, 1 .1, okay? And that number goes in right about in here somewhere. And I could say, is that greater than zero? Yes, it is, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to talk about all of those decimals. Well, I could talk about some of these fractions, right? I could say 1 fourth, okay? One fourth comes in right about in there somewhere. Is that greater than zero? Yes. It's not very much greater than zero, but it is, okay? I could say one hundredth. That's bigger than zero, not by much. One thousandth, okay? That's even a smaller piece. It's still bigger than zero. So I could keep doing that over and over and over again. <clears throat> and really what you're doing is you're saying even the smallest piece, as long as it's a little bit over zero, it's still over zero. Okay, so... Let's take a look at another one here. Uh, and here we have another one. All numbers that are less than 2. Okay? So why don't you go ahead. Why don't you try and you try to graph this one on the number line. Okay? Go ahead. Okay. So I'm hoping what you did is you said, okay, well, which numbers on a number line are going to be less than 2? Right? So if we start at 2... We can put a circle here, okay? Now, I'm not going to fill in the circle because if I put in 2, right, is 2 less than 2? No, <clears throat> okay? That's not true. 2 is not less than true. It's equal to it, <coughs> but it's not less than. Okay, so that's why you have the open circle. Now, I'm going to look at any number less than 2. Well, let's take a look here. If I look at 3, is 3 lower than 2? No. Is 4 lower than 2? No. In fact, all the numbers on this side are not lower than 2. Well, what about over here? What about 1? Is 1 lower than 2? Yes. How about 0? Yes. Negative 1. And all of these. What about all these numbers that are in decimals, like 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7? Are they all lower than 2? Yes, they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go all the way this way, and then I'm going to fill in my arrow at the end to say, you're going to keep going on and on and on, okay? <clears throat> and that's what this looks like, okay? So all of these three things are all saying the same thing, okay? So what I'm going to be able to expect you to do is you're going to want, I'm going to want you to give me, if I give you the expression like this, you're going to have to tell me what it, what it, what, what it's saying, and then you're also going to need to give me a graph. Or if I give you the words, are you going to be able to give me the graph and the mathematical expression? Or if I give you the graph, are you going to be able to give me the other two? All right, and that's what we're going to practice here. All right, let's try another one. Let's You go ahead and try this one. If I give you x um, is less than or equal to negative 1, which means all numbers that are less than or equal to 1, negative 1, go ahead and try this one. Okay, well, looking at this one, now I have this or equal to sign, okay, which says instead of before having an open circle, I'm going to have a closed circle because negative 1 is now part of the solution, okay? Because negative 1, is it lower than negative 1? No, but it could be equal to, and that's what it's saying. What number is lower than or equal to negative 1? All right, now I'm just going to look over here. Is 0 less than negative 1? Is it? <clears throat> It's actually not. Even though it might seem like it, it's not going to be. So it, it, a lot of times it might be easier just to pick a positive number and then look at it as 1. Is 1 less than negative 1? No, that's not true. And then what about if we do uh, negative 2? Is negative 2 less than negative 1? It is, okay? And w in fact, it's all numbers this way, all right? So my suggestion would be always pick a couple, like one or two numbers on either side, a positive and a negative, and see, and test it to see if it works. All right, let's try another one here for you guys. Uh, why don't you go ahead and you try graphing this one. Go. All right, well, hopefully I had a chance to try this out, and let's go ahead and try it. All right, so we're looking at numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 2. So we're going to start at negative 2, and we're going to fill it in because I know it's or equal to. 
and then I'm going to look, and I'm going to say, okay, let's pick 0. 0 more than negative 2? Yes, it is. What about 2? Is 2 more than negative 2? Yeah. What about 4? Is 4 more than negative 2? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this line heading to the right, all the numbers that are greater than this, okay? And then what about on the left? Let's look at this. We could say negative 3. Is that greater than negative 2? No, it's not. Okay? And now what you might want to do, and I didn't actually think about this until just a second, is, you know, think about we can use our vertical number lines again, okay? You can look at this and say 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and we can look at the 1 and 2, and we can count up and down here, and we can say, do these numbers, does this does this work, okay? And you look at this and say great numbers greater than negative 2. So I'm going to look here, and I'm going to say greater than, well, that means up, okay? Numbers that are greater than that, all right? And then on this other one here, if we look at this one, okay? If we go up and down, we can say 0 and negative 1 and negative 2 and 1 and 2, and we can say numbers that are less than negative 1. Well, we're starting at negative 1, and less than means down. Okay? Another way of doing it. Okay. What I want you to do here is, I want you to try to give me the mathematical statement, okay? And write it in math, what's happening here, and also in words, okay? Why don't you pause the video and try these two. Go. All right, let's take a look at this one. This one, we're talking about we have a number, right? Some number, we don't know what it is, but we're going above, so it's going to be greater than, and it's going to be greater than, where are we starting? We're starting at negative 1, and because this is filled in, it's all numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 1, okay? All numbers greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, let's look at this one. Again, we have what number? We're talking about all numbers. It's going to the right, right? It's getting bigger, so greater than 2. This is an empty hole, so we're going to leave it like that. And what we're saying are all numbers greater than 2. Okay. All right, well, let's do one more page here. Why don't you guys try this one and see how you do. All right, last one here. So we have numbers, we have all numbers. We're talking about look going down, so it's going to be less than negative 1. Open circle, so it's not included here. So we're talking about all numbers less than negative 1. Okay, and this last one, we're talking about numbers that are going to be less than 2, it's also a filled in, so it could be equal to, so we're talking about all numbers less than or equal to 2. Okay, tomorrow we're going to do in classes, we're going to start talking about some situations where in real life where you encounter something with an inequality. And I'm going to give you one hint on one, and then I want you to try to come up with one of your, these on your own in class, okay? So here's, here's one way that you can describe an inequality, which <clears throat> a lot of the eighth graders will uh, experience this uh, coming up right after graduation, okay? Let's say you go to Great America, and you want to ride a ride. Well, there are height restrictions, right? In order to ride a ride, your height, H, needs to be greater than or equal to 48 inches. All right, that would be an inequality. Okay, this situation is represented by an inequality. Anybody who's 48 inches or taller can ride rides. And that's what this is talking about. This is how you might use an inequality because you could be 49 inches. You could be 48 on the dot. You could be 48.1. You could be 78 inches, right? As long as you meet that the bottom of that line or taller, you're good to go. Okay, we'll talk more about this in class tomorrow.